Mataji Tip 32 Mangala Sutta, verse 21 To be steadfast in moral value, not to be negligent in doing good deeds, to keep the moral precepts, to practice meditation. Becoming steadfast in moral values reminds us how we are personally responsible for our thoughts, words, and actions. No one else decides what we do and how we decide to act in life. No higher source is in charge of this. We alone are in charge of what we keep in our mind. Not to be negligent in doing good deeds reminds us to keep practicing metta and karuna to help people as much as possible. Loving kindness supports the arising of compassion. Active compassion supports good intention to keep arising. Good intention turns into wholesome actions through compassionate service day to day. By keeping moral precepts, the universe responds by sheltering us from distractions. The precepts are well tested Wise advice the Buddha confirmed across millenniums. Keeping your precepts helps to provide needed wholesome soil that grows cordiality within our living situations. One has to wonder if we humans would ever blend like milk and water without keeping the precepts. To practice meditation, the Buddha advised us to practice meditation because he knew that meditation was the observation instrument through which you could experience knowledge and vision of how things actually work, just as he did. And once you see how life actually works, all fear vanishes. Everything changes. You have come in contact with life's grand design, and this knowledge can set you free from when you pursue it to whatever length you can do it in this life. After his awakening, the Buddha taught others how to repeat his own investigation. He taught a gradual teaching, gradual practice, gradual progress that led to a final release from all suffering. One practice he taught was called right effort, samawayama. This tiny four-step meditation can clear your mind and change your life if you adopt it and keep it going during life. Changes can happen very fast. This practice can be presented like a game and you are challenged to interweave the steps of the practice into your mind as you repeat them. Connecting loving-kindness, the metta, and right effort works beautifully. Any age person can learn this practice. The heart and will, hearts will lighten. The weight of life begins to fall away. People feel younger. Smiles begin to grow each time you think, never mind, and you let go. Each time you say, never mind, you let go of craving. The word never mind simply means let it go. Whenever you notice a tightness based on personal opinion in your mind, that's craving increasing in your mind. Immediately if you think never mind and you let it go, all of your opinion and relief happens. Number three, you then smile as you return to whatever pre present time task you were doing. You continue to smile, number four, into your task, no matter what it is, to produce more wholesome mind states, and you stick to your job, no matter what it is, until it is done. That's right, effort. In its original form, this effort turns into right striving once it becomes an automatic habit in your mind. What we learned over a number of years is that without the precepts being kept, the practice does not grow substantially. 
It only helps you in temporary ways. Distractions return in life. The balancing factor for successful meditation that led to life changes was definitely keeping the precepts all the time so that there will be no obstructions when you pursue the path to complete your journey and experience Nibbana. Always remember that the precepts were not just training precepts. That term is not accurate. The precepts were for all of your life to help you all the time and the universe will then support you. Have a great day. Remember the Dhamma. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.